This is 14.4 Digestive Accessory Organ Notes. The essential question is, what are the locations and functions of the accessory organs? Remember that accessory organs are organs that the food does not actually pass through, but they aid in digestion in some way. They are, can be involved in mechanical and chemical digestion of the food. They may produce certain type of, of fluid or secretions that aid in digestion. And um, organs that are included in the accessory are um, structures inside the mouth, like the salivary glands, um, the teeth, stomach. We have a bunch of glands that produce certain kind of uh, secretions that um, are part of the gastric juices. And then the intestines have structures, glands that produce certain type of fluids that aid in movement of food, and then we got organs like liver, pancreas, and gallbladder that aid in digestion also. Teeth is considered an accessory organ because it is not a tube that the food actually passed through. It is not part of the digestive tract. The anatomy of the teeth, the, uh, the most outer layer of the teeth is called the enamel. It is the hardest substance of the body and it protects the teeth from uh, the soft portions of the teeth, the inner portions. Dentin is the structure that is uh, the inner layer, the middle layer of the teeth and it is like the tissue that is the same material that the bone is. It's a bone tissue. It is a little bit, it is still hard, but it is um, softer than the enamel. The soft inner portion of the tooth is called the pulp, and this is where the nerves and blood vessels are. And so when you have a cavity, which is a hole in the enamel or the dentin, uh, you might not notice that you have a cavity until it gets so bad that the cavity, the hole, ends up in the pulp. And then what happens is that's when you have a toothache. And then when that case, you go to the dentist, then you have a major procedure that you have to do because now he has to drill, drill all the way down into the center portion of the tooth to repair the damage. The supporting ligament is a connective tissue that's holding the tooth to the uh, bone of the jawbone either the jawbone, including the maxilla, which is the upper jawbone, and the mandible, which is the lower jawbone. Gingiva is another term for the gums. Gums is what's basically um, surrounding the gum. And we will go through the regions of the tooth also. The regions of the teeth, the portion that is above the gum is called the crown, and then the portion underneath the gum is called the root the part you don't see. There are two types of teeth. Deciduous, deciduous teeth are your baby teeth, and those are the teeth that comes in first, and then eventually they will fall out, and then they will be replaced by the permanent teeth or the adult teeth, and there's 32 of them, and does not include the wisdom teeth. There are different types of teeth that make up the, deciduous, uh, the permanent teeth, the incisors are the four that are in the front, and that is specifically for cutting the food. So when you bite into a food, it cuts it into pieces. Then you have the cuspid or the canine, which are the, the usually like the vampire type of teeth. And you got those right on the inside of the right, just next to the incisors. And then you have the premolars, which are just behind the canines. And then the molars are the ones on the sides. So the molars and the premolars are the ones that you actually grind the food and mash them up into small bits. And then canines are the ones that actually are sharp, so they puncture the meat and they tear and they shred the meat. And so when you see animals that are purely carnivores, they eat meat, they have really sharp canines. And then animals that are more um, plant eaters or other type of herbivores, 
and they have more of the molars and the premolars because they need a teeth that will be able to grind up the food. Because we do have other types of teeth, we have incisors, canines, molars, and premolars. We are what is known as omnivores, which means we are able to eat plant and also meat. Salivary glands produce saliva. It produces uh, saliva it consists of a mixture of 99% of water and mucus. You notice that when you eat food, you do have different types of saliva. The one that's watery consistency and the one that are the slimy ones that gets really stringy. The saliva, the watery part of it, is to kind of allows the food particles to stick together to create a bolus, which is a ball of food. The mucus, on the other hand, their job is to coat the bolus so that they will be able to they will make it, remember, mucus is slimy, so it makes it slippery so it can pass through the digestive tract much easier. Saliva also contains an enzyme, salivary amylase, and their job is to digest starch, which is part of the carbohydrate, like crackers and bread is made up of starch, and also potato and corn. There are three pairs of uh, salivary glands, you have the parotid, which are on the sides of the cheek. When you um, sometimes eat something really sour and you get that little ache in the cheek, that's due to the parotid. It is the main salivary gland. And then submandibular is under the jaw, that's what it means. And then the sublingual is underneath the tongue. Gastric glands are glands that are in the stomach. When you see the word gastric, it always refers to the stomach. There are the goblet cells, and you know those produce mucus. But in the stomach, they have an extra job, not making things slippery, but also what it does, it coats the stomach wall, and it protects it against the stomach acid. The stomach acid is a pH of 2. The hydrochloric acid is very acidic. It can pretty much eat through anything. So that mucus lining protects it from eating away the wall of the stomach. Um, if it does get eaten away or it starts eroding, that mucus lining gets um, eroded, then that's what causes ulcers. Chief cells, their job is to produce a chemical called pepsinogen. Now, pepsinogen in itself can't do anything, but when it is in the stomach and adds with the hydrochloric acid, it uh, turns it into pepsin. And pepsin is the actual enzyme that breaks down protein in the stomach. Parietal cells, their job is to produce the hydrochloric acid, and they produce intrinsic factor. Intrinsic factor is needed for absorption of vitamin B12 in stomach. Remember that one of the um, alcohol is one of those things that can directly absorb through the stomach lining. And so that if you have, if you are a chronic drinker, you could have um, vitamin B12 deficiency or problems with intrinsic factor. Intestinal glands f uh, produce uh, various different types of uh, fluids that mix together is called a juice. Same thing with gastric juice is a mixture of different fluids in the stomach. Duodenal glands, their job is to produce an alkaline mucus to neutralize the stomach acid because the duodenum, which is the first portion of the small intestine, the enzyme that are secreted into the duodenum will only work in the neutral or alkaline pH. Which means that the enzymes in the stomach will only work in the stomach in the acidic environment and the enzymes of the small intestine or duodenum will only work in neutral or basic pH. Pancreas is a major organ that produces enzymes and are released into the duodenum. Um, there is the pancreatic amylase, which digests carbohydrates like starch. There is the lipase, which digests fat or lipids, and then you have trypsin and chymotrypsin. They're enzymes that digest protein, and these are all enzymes that are released into the duodenum for all, so all of these foods are digested in the small intestine. Also, the pancreas produces a hormone called insulin, which regulates blood sugar in the blood. 
And if you have problem with your insulin, that could lead to diabetes. Liver is the largest gland or organ in the body. It is made up of four lobes. It is located just underneath the diaphragm. Diaphragm is that wall that separates the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity. It is held in place to, by the falciform ligament. Their job is to store uh, glycogen, which is a stored form of glucose, and fat, and they also store vitamins and iron. They also produce bile, and bile is a chemical that breaks down fat, and that's the word emulsify. Emulsify means to um, break it down into small fat droplets. They also function in removing of drugs and alcohol and hormone. Any kind of toxic substance, the liver will try to make it non-toxic. Remember the term for liver is hepatic. When we recall from the cardiovascular system, the hepatic portal vein are various blood vessels that send blood to the, a network of blood vessels that send blood to the liver, and it specifically comes from the intestines. So any food that might be contaminated with drugs, alcohol, hormones, or any kind of bacteria or viruses, microorganisms, pathogens that could be harmful, passes through the uh, hepatic portal vein into the liver to be cleaned up before it is transported to the heart to be distributed to the rest of the body. Gallbladder is a pear-shaped organ found underneath the liver on the right side. And remember, the gallbladder is located in the right hypochondriac region. And their job is to store bile that is produced by the liver. And then it is released to the duodenum by the cystic duct. So here is the bile, common bile duct. So the gallbladder will release it into the cystic duct and then the various cystic duct which is this one right here will come together to form the common bile duct and then that will release it into the duodenum 14.4 notes homework number one draw and label the regions of the teeth number two name the enzymes of the pancreas and describe the function of each number three describe the locations and functions of the liver and the gallbladder